This is the type of fuse that was often seen in homes. These are have been replaced with circuit breakers in most cases now, but, but look at the bottom. It looks like the bottom of a light bulb, and in fact it's about the same size and shape as a light bulb. And there's a glass top here, you can see the wire. And basically what would happen with a fuse like this is the fuse just screws in, and so let's draw it like this. And that's it, there's no bulb up here. Um, the, the, the electricity will just come in, say, through a metal contact with the side of the housing here. And there's a wire inside that might run like this and then down. And so the electricity flows through that wire and then out the contact at the bottom. So you put this in a place where you need to uh, keep too much electricity from flowing. And then there's a glass top up here that allows you to see in and see if the wire is uh, is melted. These would commonly be used on, on the main power panel in a home. And I'll just draw a quick sketch. This is a big gray box. You can usually find it on a wall in your house uh, over in say the laundry room or utility room or in a closet or something. And there's usually a couple of big cables. They usually come in at the top. And if you open it up, and you don't want to take the cover off because it's dangerous inside, but these cables come down and there were rows um, rows of fuses on each side and um, and the, the wires would branch out and these little fuses like I was drawing a picture of or we were looking at would screw in right here there would be a row down each side and then the wires would would run out here and these would be going through the walls of the house and so some wires would be going to the kitchen, some to the bedroom, some to the bathroom. Every circuit in your house ultimately ran back to one of these fuses. So electricity coming in from the outside would have to go through one of the fuses. And this was very important because if you say this wire runs over to your bedroom and, um, and it's ultimately connected to these electrical outlets. Let me draw that a little bit bigger. This wire is ultimately connected to electrical outlets along the wall or walls of the bedroom and everything you plug in in that particular room is drawing power through this circuit and there's usually roughly one per room it depends on how the electricians wired the house when they built it but there's typically a circuit running to a bedroom a circuit running say to the kitchen, a circuit running to the bathroom and so on. There's usually a separate circuit to the air conditioner, a separate one to the dryer, a separate one to the stove. The, the devices that use a lot of electricity probably have their own circuit. But you might have several outlets on one circuit. And if you plug in a lot of things into these outlets, you're going to start drawing a lot of power through this circuit. And that could be a problem because too much power going through the circuit could cause this wire to get really hot and it can get hot enough to start a fire. This wire is running through the walls and the walls are typically made of wood and houses have burned down just because of too much heat from too much electricity going through the wire. So having a fuse there is very important. The fuse will melt before the wire gets hot enough to start a fire. And that's the purpose of the fuse. And it would be a problem here. The fuses are typically rated with a certain amperage, and it would be a problem if the fuses were replaced with the wrong amperage. Suppose, for example, right there you had a, a 20 amp fuse, and you put in, you plug in a bunch of things. You plug in your computer, your stereo, your hair dryer, and so on. And then this fuse burns out, and everything in the room shuts off because the fuse has burned out. And so you say to yourself, "Oh, that's frustrating," and you go to the closet and you, you put in a new fuse right there and then everything comes back on but a minute later it burns out again because you have too much stuff plugged in and it gets frustrating so you go down to the hardware store and you get some more fuses and you say to yourself I'm tired of that fuse burning out so I'm gonna replace that 20 amp fuse with a 30 amp fuse and now now you can hook in all this stuff into these plugs and the fuse doesn't burn out because this fuse is rated at 30 amps. Now that's bad. The reason there was a 20 amp fuse here was because this wire isn't supposed to have more than 20 amps in it. And if you replace the 20 amp fuse with a 30 amp fuse, then you're allowing more electricity to flow through this wire than it, than it was designed to handle. And that's the kind of thing that would typically start a fire 
people replacing the fuse with one that's the wrong size or the wrong amperage and allowing too much electricity to flow and too much heat to be generated and a fire gets started. So fuses now have been replaced largely with circuit breakers because the circuit breakers you can't easily do this, you can't easily replace them so they're a lot safer and, um, and they also respond a lot more quickly so they're, they're safer for that reason as well. Here's a picture of a modern panel box with circuit breakers in it and it looks like the main power cable is coming in here from the side although they usually come in from the top or actually that might be the main power coming in from the bottom right down there but either way the power is coming up and it's going through each through these uh, circuit breakers each little black thing here is a circuit breaker and I, I think this is coming in from the bottom and it goes through and then out to these wires and someone's done a really nice job here of arranging all these wires that are usually usually not as neat as you see them here but these wires are then running through the walls of the house to various places, to various rooms in the house. And you see some coming out on the right side as well. And if too much electricity goes through the, the circuit breaker, the circuit will trip. And basically what it is is a little switch, and if it gets hot, the switch just flips over. And you don't have to replace it, you can just walk over there and flip it back. It might be a good idea to turn off a couple of devices in the room first, or whatever's on that circuit that caused it to trip. You would typically shut a couple of things down, um, and then you can go flip the circuit back. So it's, it's a lot more convenient, it's a lot easier, and it's also a lot safer. In fact, um, I bought a house a few years ago. And when you buy a house, you want to buy fire insurance for the house. And the house had a fuse box. The old style fuses here instead of a circuit breaker. And when I went to the insurance company to buy uh, fire insurance for the house, they wouldn't sell me fire insurance unless I replaced the fuse box with a, a modern circuit breaker panel. And so I did that. I replaced it. And, or, or I had some electricians come and replace it. And then, um, and then I was able to insure the house. And the current building codes call for circuit breakers instead of fuse boxes.